Hey, hello, hi, everybody. This is Brian again with this unusual interview series where I'm doing reverse interviews, actually interviewing my clients. And I am focusing primarily on entrepreneurs who have had either short or long-term experience to me in level five and getting their take on what the value of level five is to entrepreneurs, especially in uncertain times uh, when the shit's hitting the fan, et cetera. And so today I am so grateful. This, this one's special. Uh, Tim and I have now been, he was a client eight years ago, I'm, I'm thinking, if I'm not mistaken. And we've been friends actually since that time. Tim is a, an event promoter, does laser show production, is involved in entertainment and events around the world, has had his hands, a serial entrepreneur would be the best way to say it, uh, involved with a lot of things. And so welcome, Tim, and thanks very much for being on with me, man. It is good to be here, Brian. Thank you again. Yeah, I'm grateful, buddy. So I, I have a few, as I told you, some very laser-targeted questions. And what I want to start with is if you could describe like how many years, how many dollars, you know, I'm not looking for specific numbers, but how many years and what kind of investment of time and money you put into any self-help or any personal professional development prior to discovering me? Wow. Uh, well, I didn't start any personal development until I was about 41 or 42. So that's, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Well, I'm 56 now. Um, and it, it was kind of by accident, if you can imagine an accident. Um, my first training was a, a local training. I'm, I'm, I was based in the Philippines at the time. I saw this Philippine company and got with them. Um, but since then, I have probably spent something in the region of about fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and invested hundreds and hundreds of hours in training. Okay, so it's, and it's considerable. I dig it, man. Okay, and then you discovered me about eight years ago, roughly. And being a practical, pragmatic, you know, kind of a, you're a solid person and not necessarily drawn to the weird at, up until that point like this. So what was it that drew you to me and what was that like for you right at the very beginning? Yeah, well, I was actually introduced, if you remember, by a mutual friend who is also, who was at the time, one of my mentors and coaches. Yeah. Uh, and she introduced me to you. And when I first met you, I thought you were a complete fruitcake. Uh, I thought you had a, a few marbles rolling around in your head. And uh, the words that were coming out of your mouth, you know, we are all one and all that kind of stuff. I was like, what planet is this guy on? But there was something about your enthusiasm and your personality, which kind of drew me towards you. And I thought, okay, let's give this guy a chance. And if you remember, at the time, it was a 90-day program we were doing, and I needed to raise $30,000, or I was going to lose my land. I, just, I bought a big plot of land. I was going to build my dream house on it, and I was really struggling in business at the time to get the cash together to pay for that. And you said, let me help you, and you did. And I did get the $30,000, and I did buy the land. So that was like, uh-huh maybe you have something. So it was initially financially driven. You helped me through your words and your, your whatever um, to create, to help me create extra income. So that was very attractive. As time went on, you said something to me, which has stayed with me since that moment that I'd never heard from anybody else. I had grown up in a world where I was always compared to everyone else. My brothers, my, my stepfather used to say, why can't you be like your brothers? Why can't you be like this? Why can't you be more successful? My father, my stepfather wanted me to be a priest, if you can imagine. And if you know me, I'm not a priest. Uh, um, so I disappointed him big time. And I was very good at disappointing people. My school uh, wrote a report saying Tim will never ever amount to anything. So for a while I made them very proud. I didn't amount to anything. <laughs> They were right. So I grew up in this world of a broken world. I was a broken person. I was a broken Tim. I was a piece, use of peaceless crap, would never amount to anything. And then one day you said to me, you're perfect. And I mean, there was a you know, slightly bigger conversation that, but you told me I'm perfect. 
There's nothing wrong with me. I'm not broken. I don't need self-help. I don't need personal development. I just need to be me. And initially, I kind of, what the hell is he talking about? But then I went away, and within a few days, few weeks, it simmered in my head. And then one day I said, what if he's right? What if Brian's right, that I'm, I'm perfect, and I, I'm not a screw-up, and I was put here for a reason, and that I'm, I'm perfect? If I was perfect, what could I do? And it changed. It's like floodgates open for me. Doors open, opportunities open, different things started coming to my life. And you didn't change my world. You helped me through your words change the way I look at the world. And instead of looking at it as a victim, broken, destroyed piece of crap, I looked at it as a perfect man. And if you're perfect, what could I create from it? And it changed everything, Brian. Wow, that's beautiful. And then, and then, so this was years ago. We have, we've stayed in contact. We've still we never physically hugged or sh shaken hands yet. We have to do something yep. about that soon. And we have stayed in contact and we've done a couple spell breaks over the years. Yep. And uh, people that want to see those, if you get, I'll do a moment of self promotion here. If you get my book, if you don't already have it, watch this money spell break that's at the end of the first chapter and just be ready to be blown away because Tim was balls of steel and he showed up and said man yes you can do this you can record it we'll do it live and and i'll let the public see it and it was it's absolutely incredible tim and i want you to know i told you that day we haven't really we haven't been face to face since that call i don't think and if i were to tell you how many people have said i'm so grateful that tim did that and that he had the guts to let that thing be public. So you are widely appreciated around the world, my friend. Tens of thousands of people, buddy. But so you know, I've had a lot of people from your world reach out to me and say, wow, you have no idea the impact it made to me. So I'm wow. equally grateful, you know? <laughs> wow, and we said that at the beginning of that call. Like, man, this is gonna, so what a, what a beautiful thing. I'm really glad we landed on that. I wanna keep And you made me cry as well. Yeah, you know, I, I have shed more than one tear over uh, over our connection and friendship and what's happened in your life. And man, I love what I do, and I love watching the things happen in people's lives. So I've seen your relationship. I've seen if you could just, you know, I, I, I would rather you talked all day. And I'm aiming to keep these videos close to 15, 20 minutes, just so they're easy to consume. So last couple questions here: If you were to say the top three or four changes in your life from directly or indirectly from the work you did with me, what would that be? Love, responsibility, and peace. I grew up as an angry person. I was angry with my father for leaving me. I was angry with the hospital uh, that I was in for three years. I was angry with my mom. I was angry with the world. I was angry the whole time of my life. And because of it, my relationships were crap. I would have you know, girlfriend after girlfriend after girlfriend. And I couldn't understand why they were leaving me. And I, working with you made me realize that I was responsible. I kept looking for love. I kept looking for money. I kept looking for solutions. And then working with you made me realize that it's me. I am the money. I am the love. I am everything. It, it all pours out of me. So when I started taking responsibility and realizing that I created the split, I created the bad, the bad, um, because of the, what I was angry. When I started focusing on the other things, like being a loving man that I am, because I am, I'm a really loving man, but I pushed it down and hid it. And, and I didn't want to admit, I thought being loving was girly, you know, but it's not, it's powerful. powerful. When I started to love people, they love me back. And now I have this, the most, when we first met, I was in this really toxic relationship. I have the most amazing, amazing relationship. We've just celebrated our 8.1 anniversary. We have our 97th monthsary. Um, unfortunately, we had to celebrate it at home because <laughs> we're in lockdown right now. But hey, we don't care. We celebrate it anyway. Um, so we've been together 8.1 years. Uh, we're gonna, I love her more than the day I met her. We have this incredible, incredible relationship because 
I just pour out love to her and she pours it back. And it's just wonderful. So taking responsibility was number one. It was, you know, I'm creating everything that I, I like and I don't like. So, you know, if I have a choice, why not just create everything I like? Um, just pour out the love that I have within me. It doesn't matter if people listen to me or not or like me or not. I just pour, keep pouring out the love. And, you know, I have some people who tell me, do you think you're someone special? And I go, yes. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> um, so there's some people who don't like it. It's like w when I first met you, I thought you were weird. And some people think I'm weird. And I think weird is fantastic because if you're not weird, you're normal. And we all know how that is normal. Like, does anybody actually want that anymore? Right? Oh, okay. Please. So la final actual two questions. And this one, this is going to be the weirdest question because one of the things for me, whenever I work with entrepreneurs, I, I have to help in order to help them. I must show them that there's no such thing as being an entrepreneur and there's ultimately no such thing as business. Okay. However, to have full freedom as an entrepreneur, you have to have full freedom as a person. And, uh, that old, that saying, you can't be one type of person as a different and a different type of business person, because guess who puts on the business hat in the morning? It's you're the one under the hat, right? So if you were to say what level five means and what the benefit in your estimation for entrepreneurs, change makers, people that really want to be business free, money free, successful, happy in their work, especially in tough times. What would you, what would you say that I, you had no time to prepare this question? What would you say the value is to entrepreneurs of level five in my work, especially under these circumstances? Well, that's a profound question. Um, stop worrying. I remember getting on an airplane one time and someone said to me, why are you so happy? There's all this shit going on in the world. And I said, it's not my shit. And he was like, oh, I like that. So one of the things I learned about you is, uh, with you, was to stop worrying about the shit. Like right now we're, we're under this coronavirus craziness. I acknowledge it's there. You know, I can't not. People, allegedly people are dying all over the world. I don't know any of them, but apparently they're all dying. And we're being fed this fear which is not so different from the fear that we were fed after 9-11. You know, it was all these negative words. And I acknowledge it's there. And I acknowledge how I can help by applying some very simple rules, like stay at home. Um, I said to you before we started this, I'm the virus. I am the cure. If I go out, I could be the virus. If I stay at home, I can be the cure. So I acknowledge it's there. Uh, same with money issues right now. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are worried about money. Um, the, you know, the, the government are not going to come around and pay your salary and say, don't worry, we're going to take care of everything. We'll pay your credit cards, we'll pay your mortgage, pay all this. Eventually, it's all going to run out. So I need to take responsibility of that and go, I need to do something. So hanging on to the old paradigms of like my business. I have an entertainment company. I do shows all over the world. Now there's no shows. We've had no income for three months. So I can sit here thinking it's, it's going to be okay. Or I, can, I can do something about it and say, I need to start creating money now. So that's what I'm doing. I, I choose to acknowledge the fear, but not let it to scare me into doing nothing and being impotent. I'm, I'm learning new techniques. I'm learning new skills. I'm putting it to use. I'm connecting with people that can work with me like you. We're supporting each other. We're building this new community and we, we're going to help out in whatever way we can so i i think that's a you know um i was once asked if by one of my other mentors if you were your girlfriend would you want to be your girlfriend and of course i said yes i'm perfect she said so why do all your girlfriends keep leaving you and i said wow that's actually a good question if i was my girlfriend would i want to be my girlfriend and i said actually i don't treat women very well so you know maybe not so I took that a step further. If I was my customer, would I want to be my customer? If I was my, my friend, would I want to be my friend? And I started to shift in the way that I treated other people. What happened was people started coming towards me instead of repelling me. I was literally pushing people away by my 
my shit. And I started treating people differently and they started coming towards me. So I acknowledge the crap, but it doesn't have to dictate my life. People say how you respond to things is what's important. But I say the world needs to respond to what I'm doing because it's more important. <laughs> not the other way around. I don't need to respond to coronavirus. Coronavirus needs to respond to me. I acknowledge it's there, but I'm more powerful and I'm going to put other things into place. And if we all do that, eventually we'll beat it and all the other crap. Beautifully said, man. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And now the final question. This is my favorite one. I've done, I've done three interviews today and each one, the answer to this question dazzled even me. Okay. Imagine that it's eight years ago and a day. So it's the day before you found me, right? Only you're here right now and you run into Tim on the internet and he's about to watch your video right now. And you're about to look at Tim the day before you met me, right? So it's a oh. Tim, somebody just like you who's in the exact same circumstances you were in, relationships you were in, money, attitude, feelings, everything that you were in. And he's right now looking at my work or considering hiring me or bringing level five into his life, his family, his company, but he's not sure. What would you say to him? Do it. <laughs> That was way too complicated, man. That was way too complicated. Yeah, no, do it. Uh, I tell you, you are a fresh breath air, as crazy as you are. And, you know, when I first met you, I thought you were crazy. I still think you are. Um, and I think that's awesome because the crazy people are the ones who change the world. Everyone else is thinking about it. We just go ahead and do it. So I, I think if, if I was to be honest, that was one of the things that actually attracted me to you was that you weren't conventional. I didn't understand the words that were coming out of your mouth because... For 40 or 48 years or whatever it was since I met you, I'd listened to other people and I understood the words that were coming out of their mouths and it didn't get me anywhere. You came along and I didn't understand what you were talking about and I thought maybe he has something because I don't know what he's talking about. It's totally different. So if I was to meet me then, that would be really interesting actually to meet me then because I'm a totally different makeup now. I wasn't very happy. I wasn't very trusting. I wasn't very nice. And now I'm really happy. Um, my definition of success has always been freedom. Being with you has created freedom. And I am free of the crap. Do I have issues and pro problems? Yes. How I deal with them is totally different. Like, including, including put them in quotes now. <laughs> yes, I'm putting things, which I never did before. <laughs> you know, talking to you sometimes is a pain in the ass, especially at the beginning, because I would say things and you would say, but I am, you, you know, I'd say, I, I, I'm sorry I'm late, I'm Bri Brian. You go, um, it's okay, it's as it should be. Or you would say, you're not late, I am, because we are one. Like, and it was kind of challenging talking to you originally, but your words shaped some of my words because it just is and it's okay and now I understand that at the beginning I didn't and it takes time to to shift 50 years of crap in my head and to clear it out and you did a magnificent job of that and I say you didn't change my life you make you allowed me to see the world in different eyes instead of through negative hatred angry eyes through opportunistic loving perfect eyes so it would be actually very interesting for me to meet me then but if i did i'd say do it beautiful two simple words well man i love you tim i appreciate you brother i'm really grateful for this i, I knew it'd be fun for you too and once again your words are going to bless whoever sees this video, your honesty, your openness. I'm really grateful to be doing this dance and uh, grateful to see what awesomeness is going to arise coming out of this virus, out of the shutdown, what magic is going to be happening in all of our lives, man. Thank you, buddy. I, th I think it's going to be really exciting what's coming next. You and me both. Yeah. Appreciate it, brother. Okay. Take care. Aloha.